After years of impatiently waiting, I finally have both the Iris 3 and the Iris 4 in hand. My first impression of these next generation hollow sun lasers is that the civilian laser market will never be the same. I've had the Iris 3 for about 8 months, and I've had the Iris 4 for a few weeks, so don't consider these long-term review, just first impressions and a way to get started. If you're new to night vision and lasers, I'll pin a comment with a link to my deep dive video that gives the backstory and context on civilian lasers and the laser market in general. Longtime viewers will be holding their breath at this point, remembering that I've given negative reviews on certain Holosun products in the past. Critics accuse me of hating on Holosun, but that's right, not truly the case. While the Iris isn't perfect, it's a solid performer so far, <laughs> and it just might be the all-in-one LAM solution that we've been praying for. The greatest pain point for civilians using night vision has always been infrared laser-based illuminators running out of power past 50 or 100 yards. The second pain point for civilians is the quagmire of outfitting a firearm with an IR laser, IR illuminator, and a white light after spending thousands on a helmet-mounted night vision setup. The older Holosun LS321 laser embodied many of these problems. This older design had good build quality, but was greatly underpowered and also didn't have a white light. Sure, there was also the almost always out of stock LS421, but that one's flashlight suck, its IR illumination was also very weak, and it didn't really solve problems that we had. In the past, the only way around weak civilian lasers was to either spend a fortune on a mall, get a bulky D-Ball D2, or pay two grand for a probably stolen and definitely used hard PEC-15. Enter the IRIS. The IRIS solves the civilian laser problem by giving higher than normal performance at a budget price combined with sleek design and low weight. Value and market position. The IRIS 3 at $900 and the IRIS 4 at about $1,000 both offer compelling value and performance for the money. Thanks to their V-cell illumination technology that essentially gangs multiple civilian power lasers together, the power levels of the IRIS are much improved over previous generation civilian lasers. The Holosun IRIS's claim to fame is that you get higher than normal civilian performance, new in box, lighter weight, more modern design, metal housing, and a Holosun warranty, all for half the price of a stolen slash surplus PEC-15. The Iris is not as powerful as a gray market pack or a full power laser speed M60R, but for many, if not most applications, the Iris is powerful enough. The Iris's unique thumb slide illuminator focus is intuitive and easier to use than most focusing systems, but honestly, I don't change focus enough on my lambs to make this a tiebreaker one way or the other. Holosun's reputation for good quality and a warranty if needed has made them a leader in value for the money. Performance. The Iris delivers a lot more power than the older LS321, but it does fall noticeably short of the D Ball D2, Mall, and Full Power Laser Speed M6TR. All these other lasers do have more power, but for many applications, the Iris has enough power. The Iris 4 is the clear winner for me because it offers 4 in 1 performance while also being smaller, lighter, and cheaper than lasers that don't include a white light. Iris 4 comes with two crane plugs and a hollow sun tape switch. Since it's a crane plug, it's easy enough to just replace it with a Surefire system. In the past, hollow sun remote switches have been trash, so if you plan to use the rifle hard, consider replacing the included tape switch. So far, hollow sun's included remote switch has held up, but in typical Chinese laser fashion, there's at least one button that doesn't seem to do anything. The visible flashlight on the Iris 4 does not compare to high-end white lights that you'll find on the market. The truth is, I don't really care. For my night fighter setups, I want acceptable white light performance, lightweight, low bulk, and I want to focus on my IR and thermal performance. The Iris 4 white light performance falls somewhere in the mix mid-tier level between TLR1, Surefire Scout Light, some of the other kind of streamlight type quality lights. So far, there are two really ideal use cases for the Iris 4. One, thermal night hunters, where chunky thermal optics, a match barrel, and suppressor all add bulk. And so in those applications, an Iris 4 checks all of your NVG boxes, plus a white light at under 10 ounces of added weight. The second ideal use case for the Iris 4 is smaller rifles like the Mark 18, other PDWs and subguns, where real estate is limited, but you'd like to have all the functions on tap and a white light without adding all that bulk. 
YouTube channel Brass Facts did recently review the LaserSpeed M6TRV. That is their V-Cell civilian legal version. Based on his feedback and what I've seen, I would actually rather have an Iris 4 over the M6TRV for an all-in-one laser. Holosun's dual switch design on the Iris 4 beats out the ergonomics of the M6TRV's single switch design, hands down. And since the M6TRV has lower power compared to the full power M6TR, means that laser speeds band is negated. Apples to apples, you'd be a lot better off with just getting an Iris 4 compared to the M6TRV. That said, for absolute full power laser, the standard M6TR full power from laser speed does have more power than the Iris, but that version does not include a white light. Iris 3. The Iris 3 is where the value proposition gets a bit tricky. First off, let's be clear. If anyone goes out and gets an Iris 3, they're gonna get a good laser that's gonna deliver a lot of performance for the money. At 6.4 ounces, the Iris 3 is small, light, and has mostly good ergonomics and okay switchology. Unlike the Iris 4, Iris 3 has a two-dial layout where power level and on-off are controlled separately from viz and IR selection. I wish they just used the single switch layout from the Iris 4, but if you already have white lights, you can easily incorporate an Iris 3 into your weapon system and just move on with your life. The selector switches are a bit too stiff for my liking, but they do work, they seem well made, and they're very unlikely to move unintentionally. The reason that I say that the value proposition of the Iris 3 is a bit tricky is that for a similar price point, you could get a full power laser speed M6TR and get significantly more power in an also lightweight unit that's also under $1,000 at the time of this filming. And so for me, you're never wrong if you got the Iris 3. For my money, I'd actually rather have full power M6TR if I'm gonna run a separate flashlight. Summary. The Iris 4 is now my default choice for laser aiming modules due to its lightweight, ergonomics, and value proposition. The Iris 4 is not the most powerful lamb on the market, but it's powerful enough for many applications. However, if maximum IR performance under $1,000 is your top priority, then consider the less well-known full power M6TR paired with your white light of choice. As for the Iris 3 paired with a separate white light, while I'd never criticize someone for going that route, I would actually prefer a full power laser speed M6TR instead. If you're new to night vision and don't know where to start, just get an Iris 4 for your first rifle and consider a full power M6TR for your second. The extra power of the M6TR is useful past 100 yards and the quality has been good to the money. If you catch the night vision bug like I have, eventually you'll want both an Iris and a full power M6TR. The Iris 3 and the Iris 4 have truly changed the landscape of the civilian laser aiming module market. Both offer a strong value and performance for the money, and either way, you can't go wrong. It's true that the full power laser speed M6TR does offer more performance, but particularly for the Iris 4, having a four in one unit with all of your night vision laser needs met and a white light in an ergonomic and well-known package, you really just can't go wrong. My current tier list for night vision laser aiming modules, performance per dollar, Iris 4 in first place, the full power laser speed M6TR in second place, and the Iris 3 in a close third place, as far as how much I like them and where I would put them in terms of uh, quality, value, overall performance, and just ergonomics and use cases. He who gathers in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a son who brings shame. With tariffs, international conflict looming, and local unrest likely in some areas, it might be a good idea to get the items you need while you still can. Thank you.